The east coast fishing town of Arbroath has a proud history of life saving and was one of the very first places in Scotland to have a lifeboat station way back in 1803. It was in 1953, the station's 150th anniversary year, that a tragedy occurred just yards from the safety of Arbroath Harbour. On the evening of October 26th that year, reports were received by the Coast Guard of distress rockets around three miles off of the Fife coast at Fife Ness. At 10.45, the Anstruther lifeboat James and Ruby Jackson, based just a few miles south, was deployed to carry out a search. The weather that night was extremely challenging, with gale force winds and rough seas. Concerned that the ship in distress could be drifting north, the decision was also made to launch the Arbroath lifeboat Robert Lindsay, and it left the slipway at 10 to 1 in the morning on the 27th. Under the command of coxswain David Bruce, it was a Liverpool-class lifeboat with twin diesel engines and built in 1950. By maintaining radio contact, the two lifeboats were able to work together and carry out a comprehensive search of the area where the rockets had been seen. Nothing was found, although the rockets almost certainly came from a Dundee sand dredger called Island McGee, which sank that night with the loss of all six crew. Having concluded the search, the James and Ruby Jackson made for home, arriving back at Anstruther at quarter to six in the morning. The Honorary Secretary of the Arbroath Lifeboat, Councillor David Chapel, suggested via radio that the Robert Lindsay may also want to head to Anstruther, but after a delay, the decision was taken to return to Arbroath, with the boat expected in around 5.30am. The conditions at Arbroath Harbour were not favourable. A rock bar around 300 yards east of the harbour entrance posed a danger to any boat attempting to enter. Between the rocks, the wind and the backwash of waves from the harbour piers, the sea was in a confused and unpredictable state. Realising the risks, Members of the local life-saving rocket brigade stood ready with their pistols to fire rescue lines if the worst should happen. Onlookers saw the lights of the Robert Lindsay as she inched towards the harbour. One of them was Councillor Chapel, the honorary secretary, who had suggested the diversion to Anstruther. He would later describe the scene as the lifeboat approached the harbour. One moment the lifeboat lights were there, then they disappeared. We waited anxiously. Peering into the darkness and the storm, we could pick up nothing. We had no idea where the lifeboat was. At last, feebly above the noise of the sea and the gale, there were shouts from that seething tumult of surging broken seas beyond the harbour entrance. An enormous cross sea had struck the Robert Lindsay's port side, capsizing her in an instant. Frantically, lines were shot into the darkness. Miraculously, one reached second coxswain, Archibald Smith. He would be the sole survivor. Smith relived his experience from his hospital bed. I went under with the boat. When I came up, I was lucky enough to be near the side and able to grab one of the life ropes looped around the gunwale. I heard some of my mates shouting in the water, and then someone yelled to me to climb up beside him on the upturned hull. I was frightened to let go my grip on the rope, and the next big wave washed my mate off the hull. I don't know who it was. All six other crew members perished in the darkness. Two were located soon after, as those on shore used car headlights and searchlights from fishing boats in the harbour in an attempt to illuminate the scene. Sunrise revealed the upturned lifeboat lying on the shore, opposite Inchgate Park and below the Bell Rock Tower. Recovery of the remaining victims was undertaken. Only once the lifeboat was righted was Cox and David Bruce found, still lashed to the wheel. The lost crew members were laid to rest on October 31st following a joint service. A fund was established to help the families and eventually raised almost £40,000. All funeral costs were met by the Royal National Lifeboat Institute. A public inquiry into the disaster reached the conclusion that no one was to blame the jury reached a verdict of accidental death by drowning with no blame or default attached to anyone. Archibald Smith, the only survivor, 
had already lost two brothers at sea before the Robert Lindsay tragedy, one at the same spot the lifeboat capsized. Despite this, he immediately volunteered to serve again. Arbroath soon had a new lifeboat and crew, but the events of that October night in 1953 will never be forgotten, when 12 men on the island McGee and Robert Lindsay drowned. <laughs>